Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So you're all muted. I um, hope you can hear me all. Welcome to uh, Feral Fry Up number eight. Uh, this evening we've got a special feast for the eyes for you, a special treat uh, in the form of Lee Edwards. Lee, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hi, thanks for coming. Okay, thank you Lee. So um, just a little bit of background as to these feral fry-ups. I'm sure most of you will know already. These are monthly talks, month monthly talks with artists, creative practitioners, uh, a, a varied bunch really. Um, and we're kind of hoping to, to continue doing these uh, as long as they're popular, which they seem to be. Um, last month, we spoke to uh, Claire Holdstock, a uh, London-based uh, sculptor. And this week, this month, we're, we're talking to, to Lee Edwards, who's also, you're based in London, aren't you, Lee? I'm indeed, Dom. He's based in London. And as usual, we've got Jane Jones on the phones. Jane, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hello, everybody. So Jane will be uh, taking all of your questions. Me and Lee are going to chat for about 50 minutes. Lee's selected nine people, um, actually about 12 pieces of work. And um, we're going to talk about those. And some of that goes, how far back, Lee, does it go back? Some of it? Ooh. A bit ancient, 2002. 2002, okay, so we've got a real feast for the eyes for you tonight, and lots to talk about. And then the last 10 minutes, as usual, we will reserve for you to send any questions using the chat function to Jane Jones on the phones, and Jane Jones on the phones will relay them to us in the last 10 minutes, and Lee and I will, well, Lee, <laughs> will try to answer them as best possible. So Lee, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Good. good. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're all good. So have you found um, that you've been working pretty hard on, on some new stuff during the lockdown? I've been doing a lot of studies um, based around some of the, the later work that we'll come to later on in the, in the chat. Um, and kind of responding to the artist support pledge, really, which has been going on, on Instagram, which is really good. Ah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know about that, don't you, Tom? I know about that. It might be a good idea just to explain to, to anyone who might not know how the artist support pledge works. So it's a guy called Matthew Burrows, and he created this, uh, basically this kind of um, hashtag, which offered... Uh, affordable art to people online anyone uh, nothing bigger than nothing more than 200 pounds a piece so I've been sending like sketchbook pieces and studies and and it's kind of kept me it's kept me thinking uh, during the pandemic and um, the whole idea was to support artists financially during lockdown when all the museums and uh, art technician jobs and things like that weren't allowed to be open. Um, and once you sold 1,000 pounds worth, so like effectively, if you sold every piece for 200 quid, if you sold five pieces, you pledge, which is the point of the name of it, uh, to buy another artist piece of work. So it kind of is circular. So it's quite nice. I've got two artists works so that might give you an idea of how much I sold, although that, all disappeared on rent, I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but it sounds like it's a, a really good initiative. I know quite a number mm. of people have, and it was it was very reactive to the situation of the pandemic, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it's kind of, it's really good for, you know, thinking your work through, especially when you've got a lot of time to think at the moment, so. Yeah. What you mean that this this time generally, or the the artist? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, uh, so you know, been a bit wearing uh, for mental health. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, yeah, generally speaking. So yeah, and more time to think about your work and about yourself, and you know, the grander scheme of things. So um, yeah, yeah. Is it gonna? It's gonna continue post pandemic, isn't it? What do you think? 
Uh, well, I think the idea was to, I'm plugging this really heavily, aren't I? <laughs> Matthew Burroughs must be loving this. Um, the whole idea was that, you know, it's for, for artists or creative people that couldn't work because of the, the lockdown. So I don't know whether that scheme will work afterwards or maybe it'll, there'll be a variation of it. Yeah. I think some people have you know, really profited from it and it's been a good way of other artists and other collectors getting to know artists. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's put gallerists in a, an interesting light because mm -hmm. of it, if artists are earning from, you know, this. But obviously, you know, for 200 pounds, you want to be selling your work for more than that, don't you? So yeah, it's a kind of, yeah, it's very well thought through, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't taken advantage of it myself, but, um, I know a lot of people who have and they, they've all had a really positive experience and it's you know um it's much welcomed bit of cash without the middleman of uh, you know no commission or anything um okay well let's sh should we crack on lee we've got lots of your lovely work to have a good look at okay. um, so if i i'm gonna share screen everybody now there might be a little bit of a delay between um the slides sort of move it moving along so just bear with us so um lee if we just begin with um the first image yeah which is is this one and firstly when when was this actually made uh 2015 2015 yeah it might be an idea to give people an idea of the the scale and the, yeah, the sure. yeah so generally speaking my work i think i mentioned at the beginning i might be mentioning work that is from 2002 so from that point on my work is reasonably small in scale so this is on an a4 piece of paper but the actual drawing itself is probably about a six size so roughly about that kind of size so it's quite small and yeah it's a graphite drawing it's a graphite drawing yeah. and, and can, can you give people an idea of how much time and your working method your process of working on the sure. Uh, yeah, so this took about six months to draw uh, and it was drawn from life. So I don't know if you can tell what it is, because I quite like the aspect of this. It's a bit ambiguous, but it's, uh, it's an item of underwear. So my more recent work kind of deals with like domestic objects and items that are discarded or, you know, might have been worn or used. Uh, so it's kind of like my response to that intimate object is by making it in a very intense, intimate way itself. So, yeah, uh, it's from life as well, this particular drawing. So I had the object in front of me, leaning over it on my desk, which is where I am at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, it's very much a kind of close quarters piece of work on many levels and I used I think probably 2B I think uh, yeah because there's quite a lot of shading in this one and what I would usually to so give you an idea of the kind of sharpness of the pencil oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> so usually I know, I know this this part isn't that strange but I'd get a Stanley blade slice it off so there's a certain amount of graphite there and then use um, a high grade sandpaper so like this for example is a thousand and then just kind of do that in order to make it as sharp as a dart sharp as a dart probably maybe sharper yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how I'm able to get those lines in there. And so when you're working on the, these from life, mm -hmm. 
you've got the object in one specific place yes for six months maybe longer at a yeah. time and then so, but how do you govern the, the light you've got these it's all artificial light is it or yeah i mean so this was part of an exhibition uh so a, a gallery represent me in london called domobol uh who really really nice to work with um and i had a solo show the year after i made this so in 2016 and so there were five pieces of work so three drawings and two paintings and this was the third drawing, I think. And the previous two were, oh, we'll come to the next one, this is the next slide. Uh, one of them was from photos. So that was easy to contain, obviously. So I'm referring from an image. Okay. But this one, because it's an object, uh, I, I, was try, I was struggling with natural daylight, which I prefer to use, but yeah. because it took so long, and I think it was coming into the autumn and winter months, you know, the light became less. So I had to use two lamps, so a two lamp system. So I had a controlled light system. <laughs> so that must be a really intense way of working. Should we? Yeah. Do we have a look at that? System? Yeah, sure. And just um, move on. So yeah, that's the one that's based upon a photograph. So how, how do you feel like differently about working based on photographs and working based on the thing, it's having the, the thing in front of you? I think it depends on the subject or the image. So this one just worked quite nicely because <clears throat> it was a combination of clothes that was left in a pile and obviously that wasn't going to be left there for long because um, not all of those clothes are mine and uh, so they were going to be washed at some point so I had to capture that moment and yeah so it made sense that to capture that moment it would be a photograph in order to work from mm. so in that sense that's why I work from an inch for this one. But also, yeah, I mean, you can control the contrast in the image. Mm. Uh, so there's a little bit more shadow there. Mm. And also I could crop it. So I don't know if you've got the cursor, but the top area, yeah. that's not naturally that shape. Okay. Uh, I just felt like that's a really good point in which to end, because I think there was a lot of shadow and I had to cut off at some point. So. I thought, that's well, that looks like that might be where it folds. So there's a bit of an artistic license involved there. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. So do you maybe allow to, to a certain extent how the, the objects are, where a line of a crease might go as to where might be a good point for you to cut off? I try to be as honest to what I'm looking at as I think is possible. Yeah. But if there's a little bit of wiggle room, then you know if it works in favor of it makes sense visually then i'll go with that yeah and is this so this is you said that the the previous image was made mainly with a two was it a 2b pencil yeah i think this was similar yeah because there's a lot of shadow involved so yeah because always when you think the variation of tone in some of these you think has he got a, like a set of pencils where you've got about 500 different gradients but there you go <laughs> <laughs> I have actually well I'm not just showing off how many pencils I've got I'm currently using 5H so to give you an idea of range because I'm drawing a tissue at the moment which I'll come on to later. Um, uh, so the, the shadows in that are really subtle. So 5H makes sense for those. So again, it depends on the object or the subject. It just made sense that this would have darker tones to it. Yeah. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a 5H. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't know until today. I think you can only go up to 9H only, I say. Probably rip the paper to pieces from the sharpness that I Sharp and yeah. I don't think I'll go up to 9H, that's just crazy. It's like that. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you need an 11 H because it's one louder. It's one <laughs> louder. Oh dear. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> that was a Spinal Tap reference, everybody. Mm. <laughs> so I believe the, the next image sort of takes us right back, doesn't it? Yes, so I thought I'd give everyone some context with uh, why the subject matter is that I, that I use. So the previous two images, they're kind of, as I mentioned, domestic objects, but they also relate to a relationship. And back in 2002, I saw an exhibition which kind of planted the seeds for the subject matter that I've kind of dealt with for, well, God, 18 years. Um, which is usually personal responses to relationships. Uh, so my tutor at the time, Virginia Verren, she was really cool. Um, when I was at Chelsea, uh, I was like, I, I think I'd over, I'd started on a first relationship with someone or it had just ended. And I, before, that I was doing large abstract paintings and then process based paintings and then this relationship happens and then I was just like I want to make work about that and uh, my work got smaller and smaller because the large abstract paintings and then the process was like that kind of size and then the personal for some reason became quite intimate so mm -hmm. my tutor said oh you should definitely go and see this exhibition at Matt's gallery which I don't think is next to Milan. It used to be next to Milan Park in London. I don't think it's there anymore. Um, but so I went along and um, it was an installation by Willie Doherty. So this is an exhibition called Retraces. Uh, and it was like seven or eight TV screens set up on a wall. And they were just either still images or video footage of still points of areas of Belfast and every now and again one of the screens would change to another image and it was captivating but I just loved the idea that he was capturing these kind of urban possibly dank areas like I think you can see a curbside in the middle one um, but there was a kind of romantic sensibility to the to these capturing these you know, I, I couldn't, you know, I was, I was trying to get my head around it when I was watching it. I was like, this is really kind of, yeah, I was mesmerized basically. So in response to this exhibition, I started making these small paintings, uh, which is the next slide, Dom. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'd also recently bought my first SLR camera, which was a SLR film camera, and I was just snap happy all the time taking film after film and uh, I was taking loads of photographs of my then I think ex-girlfriend of around the general area of where her studio was in a place called Trinity Boy Wharf in the Docklands mm -hmm. and they had these container shipping containers that they converted into studios and yeah one of them this one uh, was a puddle and in Trinity Boy Wolf, I don't know if you can see in the reflection, but it's the top of a lighthouse. There's a really nice preserved, uh, I think heritage preserved lighthouse there. And all of that stuff on top of the puddle is ice. So there was this, again, like with Willie Doherty's work, there were these moments that were captured. And if I had left this, because you can see that it was also a sunny day, if I would have walked past that and not photographed it, it probably would have gone within a couple of hours. So it's this nice little vignette of an area which was really close to me because of an association, but also the urban aspect, which is the MDF, which is obviously a constructive material. Mm. So I kind of wanted to combine. So it's almost like a di direct translation of Doherty's show in a way, but I kind of, I was very motivated at that time in response to what was going on in my personal life. So it kind of made sense. And that hasn't really left. So I kind no. of feel like I get a kind of, I get a drive from, you know, certain things that are going on. Yeah. And, and what sort of scale is this one, Lee? Yeah. So uh, again, this is 
basically to scale like with the drawings at the beginning so it was a six by four photo uh, and so that was a cropped area out of that photograph and it is to scale of that photo so the mdf itself to give you a full idea of the scale is about the size of the snapshot photo so six by four inches and, and it's oil yeah so it's oil on mdf uh, so did you have to just a uh, technical did, did you have to gesso prime the area or did you paint the oil? I was a bit green I think <laughs> back then I, um, what I realise now obviously that MDF has got lots of chemicals in it uh, so I think over the years that's probably going to rot away I hope the buyer because I did sell this isn't watching this um, <laughs> or is kind of wagging their finger going like yes it's happened already um, so yeah, I should have used an acrylic sizing around that area that I painted and then painted on top of that, so it would have sealed it, but I, I didn't. I do that now though, so <laughs> I've learned from my mistakes. <laughs> do, you, and do, you, do you feel like the emotional attachment, because they're such intense works, mm. does, is the emotional attachment necessary to, to, to be able to then invest yourself so intensively in reproducing the, the image? Um, at that time it was, yeah. uh, and usually it is, but I, there's a work later on in the chat where I'll say that I'm, I'm trying to step away from that a little bit because it's a double-edged sword. It's obviously, as I said, it's like a drive, but at the same time, it's a bit limiting. So yeah. I mean, usually it's, I've, I think the phrase in my head is like, it's a springboard. So yeah. if I know that, that that essence is there, then I could kind of go with that um, and turn it into something else mm. as opposed to it being literal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Should we, should we move on to the yeah, next? Yeah, 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 go for it. Okay. So this is a bit of a departure, or seems seems so. Okay. Go on, Dom, ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> is this chron chronologically? It is. Yeah. Is this, yeah. So the, the MDF piece was what I did on my BA. Yeah. And what I didn't add, and also add to the slideshow, because it would have been too many slides. Um, I installed that. So it was part of an installation. So not only did I use the constructed material to paint on, but I actually used it in part of, of construction. So I cut a hole in a wall for my degree show and I slotted it into the wall. So it almost like it came back to where it came from. Ah, to see. where it came from in essence. So installation coming to this one, was not really that much of an alien idea to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you say, departure in the sense that it is an object. So yes, I, I went on to do a master's at the Royal College in painting straight after my BA. So this is from 2004, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, anyone that's doing a master's or has done one knows that like as soon as you go in, the students make you break up your practice, which is the whole point of doing the master's really, and take you out of your comfort zone. So I kind of was experimenting and trying different things out. And I kept on noticing carrier bags in trees or as you call Dom. Which is knickers. Which is knickers, which just brings us back to the knickers as we saw in the first slide. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted to do some work in response to that because yeah, like with the puddle, I, I like the kind of ubiquitous mundane things you see in everyday life that you kind of walk past or, um, but I wanted to give the carrier bag justice. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I was doing paintings of carrier bags and I was trying to respond to them in some kind of way. And then I just started drawing on one. And uh, if you go to the next slide, so this is a detail of that carrier bag. I turned it inside out and then I drew with like um, permanent marker, really fine permanent marker, 
which might surprise you. Um, uh, all of these little lines, which originally they were supposed to be bricks. <laughs> I can't remember why now, but it made sense that, you know, I, I obviously I covered every square millimeter uh, on the inside of the bag, but they ended up looking like scales and because it looks like a skin, it kind of looked like a shed skin. So yeah, and um, how to display it. I mean, it kind of wrote its own ending really. Uh, I just drilled a hole in the wall and stuck a branch in, so. <laughs> and and with, with your working process being I'd imagine pretty obsessive with, with this piece as well as all, all of the others. Mm. Would, you, would you kind of work on this for long periods of time or would you sort of do a, an hour a day or a line of, of bricks, if you like, a day or? A line of bricks a day. Uh, I think, so this took me about a month, I think. Yeah. Uh, I used to do longer hours than I can now. I don't know whether that's because of my attention or because of my eyesight. Uh, probably a combination of both. Oh yeah, and then there's the third of the Trinity, isn't there? Sanity, um, which is slowly ebbing away. Um, so yeah, it's quite, I think I felt like I could do more hours than, than I can now. So I'd probably say a working day, eight hours, I could probably, with breaks, of course. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do an eight hour solid, but you know, a few hours at a stretch, I think, yeah. And, and did you manage to nail it on the first attempt or were there previous attempts? At no, this was the one, Dom. Yeah, it was just the one. It was an experiment and it worked, I think. Yeah. So, um, but it was also an experiment and obviously it's an object and I hadn't really done objects before. So in my mind, I wasn't really thinking it was an object. So it's like I'm drawing on a flexible piece of paper, if you like. So uh, it just happened to be three-dimensional yeah paper or plastic so yeah uh, yeah so that was quite a nice revelation for me it's like oh okay I could do that um but yeah I don't yeah I think with the next pieces it kind of makes more sense it's like I mean especially with the the knickers one that you saw at the beginning that first drawing I don't know if you got this, but like it does look quite three dimensional because of the white space around it. So mm. obviously you pick up what you take as you go along, don't you? And it feeds in. Yeah. So maybe if I hadn't have made this, I wouldn't be making the work I am now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So should we, should we move on to the next slide? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, do you have a question, Dom? So, well, this this obviously it seems like there's there's the there's the thing that we kind of associate well, we will associate with your work already now with the intensity, mm -hmm. and then that aspect of really asking us to 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 look and to scrutinise what it is to see to, because you kind of you always have this element of you're not quite sure if you believe your eyes, some of your work, you know, is that done by hand? What, what is that, you know, which is something I love about your work. But with, with this one in particular, you used a different technique, didn't you, completely? Yeah, so I think it feeds in, as I said before, you know, if these things slip through, don't they? Um, so this, in a way, responds to the, uh, the, the, the painting of the, the puddle, for example. Uh, you know, responding directly to photos that I'd taken. And yeah, so this was also a snapshot size photograph. And to describe the technique, as you, as you asked, um, uh, it's, it's a photograph of the living room, but I scratched into the surface of the photograph. So it looks like a double exposure, but if you see through the window in the photo there, there's a little house and some trees around it. So what I did was I expanded the view that you can see through the window around the furniture in the room. So it almost looks like the outside is coming in or the inside is outside. So the walls are malleable, if you like. Um, and I used a craft knife. It's a really sharp craft. Oh, I've got one here, funny enough. 
uh, one yeah. of these cheap ones you get from Cass Arts. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it's just, it's basically a case of like really, really subtly, you know, almost etching. Uh, apart from the top, because it, it luckily in that photo is an over, uh, overcast sky. So I just thought, well, I'll just make the background white. And with a photo, you know, if you tear it, you see that it's printed on paper. Uh, so you've got that really thick, glossy or matte surface of the printed image, but like you've got the paper underneath, which is usually reasonably thick. And that's what that's reduced to, that white area. So that's the paper underneath. You can kind of see the texture of the paper where it's a bit fluffy because mm -hmm. uh, removing the, the photographic image on top. And so, I mean, how long, how long would this take? Oh God, <laughs> I can't remember. This took yeah. a few months. With 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 this one, I mean, with the process of at least if you're drawing something mm. and you make a mistake, um, you can erase it. But what if you if you'd made a, a slip of the hand? Yeah, that's it. You you could have ended up with a. A big tear in the in the photo or which would have yeah scuffled. which happened with one of them <laughs> but it was quite brave of me to go no it's there i need to let that be seen because it shows that it's been made and accidents happen in the creative process so it took me ages to get over it <laughs> <laughs> i don't think I, I don't think i totally have yet but um yeah that's not in the slideshow but that did happen but yeah, I mean, for example, uh, in this one, are there any areas? I think maybe just behind the armchair to the top right, that pathway, I scratched too much out there. You can see it's really white. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it does look like the sun's casting down on it maybe, but I, that's, I, I think I remember that I was like, damn it. Um, but this was also the first in the series. So it's like, this was the experimental one. I did actually try a couple of the same image <clears throat> before I, I went on to this one. So I did have a little trial out, but this was the first. So it's a little bit rough around the edges, so to speak. And then I kind of, the next one was much more subtle. So yeah, it was quite nice doing these because uh, it was an interesting way of, of looking at, again, another kind of personal uh, subject matter so like a lot of the rooms in the series were like my parents house yeah. one was someone I was seeing at the time uh, but <laughs> I remember a friend of mine saying which is a bit cheeky I would say it if my parents were watching it's just like yeah it kind of looks like what you're trying to say is that you really want to get out of your parents house <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh no I didn't that's not what I meant uh, but yeah I don't know, maybe maybe Freud would have something to say. But, um, but yeah, uh, and I kind of thought it reminded me of, uh, do you remember where the wild things are? Yes, the, yes. Yeah, do you remember those amazing pages where Max is imagining that like he was disappearing? So you had the trees slowly growing around his bed. Yeah, and yeah. And the bush, and then all of a sudden he's in a forest. So is this the in-between stage? I'm a kind of like, you know, slightly annoyed Max, but like, he's just about to start to smile off stage with these. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Brilliant, okay. So our next image. So this is kind of bringing you back to more present day with time traveled. Uh, so those photos were um, from 2005 to 2008. So to just give you basically an idea of um, the personal subject matter and the idea that I was kind of looking at my work in a more sculptural way, like with the carrier bag and the installation. And also I thought that those photos were a bit sculptural as well, because dealing with like the space, uh, how deep a space can be in a two dimensional object. I don't know yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you saw two drawing, you saw, saw two drawings at the beginning of the slideshow. So this was like a, a continuation of that series. 
and this is from 2019. So I say quite recent, but it's still two years ago. It feels like yesterday. Um, this one, to come back to, I think a question you asked me earlier on, uh, does it always have to be a kind of personal? Mm. Yeah, this one, oh, okay. So you could still, you could still hypothesize that this is personal because yeah. I've spent months on this. Uh, so and the involvement so it is personal but in terms of a relationship with someone else this wasn't these are my own socks <laughs> uh, these are mine um and i've still got them and uh so because i didn't have i didn't have any involvement when anyone around that time but i kind of wanted to keep the idea going so i thought well i'll give it a go i'll, I'll do something about my stuff and yeah, so this was, I managed it, Dom, to answer your question from earlier. I did manage to do something which didn't involve someone else. Uh, and yeah, this was for an exhibition that I had in Kyoto uh, just before the pandemic hit. Uh, uh, so late 2019. Mm. And this was from life. I don't know if you can tell that. Can you tell it's from life? I think it can, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Details of her little hair. Yeah, around. yeah. Jane Jane just said it's she she thinks she can tell it's from life just because of the, the, the fibers mm. extending around 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 the edge there. Um yeah. Yeah, you can't really I mean you can if you've got a really expensive camera, but I I don't have a really expensive printer. So yeah. I don't think you could get that with, well, not with what I've got, like to work from a photo. So yeah, it made sense that this one was drawn from life to get that that kind of level of detail. When when you when you set out on one of these mammoth tasks, what are you thinking regarding like once you've a right once you know you're gonna focus on a a balled up pair of socks for possibly mm. six six months or whatever. Like how how long how, how do you feel when are you excited about the potentials or are you kind of like, oh crikey, I know this is gonna be a massive task, but it but I'm gonna do it. What 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 are your feelings from the offset? It's like a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it is, isn't it? It's a love-hate relationship. You're yeah, passionate yeah. about making stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of like you have your good days and you have your bad days. Yeah. You have your days where, am I going to rip it up? Uh, and you have your days where you're kind of like, oh, that's all right, actually. Yeah. So it wasn't until I finished, actually, it was probably about three, three quarters of the way through that I kind of felt like, oh, okay, this is getting there. Um. And once it once the form had started emerging, I think like ah, I'm getting it now. So yeah, and then I kind of felt a bit like and I, and I and I always forget. I, I don't know if you have this done, but like every time you make a new piece of work, you forget all of those kind of responses to what you're making. Mm. Uh, you kind of go oh, no, why isn't this working? It's like wait a minute. Do you recall you had exactly the same thought? Yeah. You know, at the beginning of the last piece that you yeah. made and you just forget so quickly yeah um, yeah do you do do you <laughs> yeah no no i have exactly the same i think you, you you kind of forget that you're going through this this process and that there's going to be these peaks and troughs it's a journey isn't it yeah 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 but i mean this is like the uh, drawing equivalent of climbing Everest, <laughs> isn't it really? It was a bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, just uh, I mean, I know it probably varies from day to day, but mm. would you have like an objective to do to cover maybe a couple of centimeters of the page a day, or uh, some areas were quicker than others? So the shaded area on the yeah, I mean, the shaded areas were easier, Yeah. funnily enough, because you might think that the lighter areas, because there's just a couple of lines, 
because there's not too much to describe were more difficult is the much more subtle yeah um the edges the fluffy bits that that jane mentions were actually the most fun bits because i was like they're subtle but they kind of give the work a bit of humor yeah if they weren't there yeah you might be going what you might be questioning exactly what it is but when you add that extra what well, icing to the cake if you like it kind of it becomes even more familiar because we all know what it's like to get fluff on our clothes um or like when the clothes are really worn you know because so that adds to the the aspect that these aren't brand new socks you can see a frayed thread there and then on the side um but yeah i mean the the darker areas are probably I'd, I'd probably do in the top left area yeah uh like a couple of rows a day and then that'd be it i, I just be like oh i can't <laughs> yeah, yeah. but that would be yeah that would be an achievement um, and and like one of the things that um i think about when when i look at a lot of these works is when we went to see your show at doma Bal, Mm. Um, which was called the fibre of being, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and and I think that was a, a lovely phrase to really kind of sum up the intensity with which you you kind of scrutinise almost. You, you it it feels so apparent to me when I look at your work that you you kind of it's almost as if you want the drawing to to be the thing. You want it to be more real than than the than the thing itself. Yes. Uh... I did want to, you could get very philosophical about this, couldn't you? Um, I, I always feel like, so I, I felt this with that puzzle painting and that series I did when I was at, at Chelsea, that like you work so long on something and if you're working from an image, for example, um, if you work so long on it, or maybe not necessarily, once you create this new thing, that original image never looks the same. Yeah, just when it did, when you first printed it or thought, okay, I'll use that. Um, so you create this new being, like this new thing in the world, like, you know, you've given birth to this baby. And yeah, like I kind of felt like, you know, doing this um, was similar. Mm. Right, so you created this thing, haven't you? And I don't know if Anthony's watching, uh, but I always remember him saying to me when I was doing, I think it was this piece of work actually. This piece of work? No, it was the first image. Yeah, it was the, the knickers. Um, <laughs> where Anthony was like, oh, I love the fray bit. And, and he said, it looks like you're learning to understand this object. And it always sat with me in saying yeah. that. Because yeah, through that process, you are really getting to getting to grips with what it is that's in front of this material thing, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we've got a few more slides to go through, mm -hmm. um, but now's the point where I sort of ask the audience who joined us to start to think about if there are any questions I'd like to ask you to start thinking about those and then possibly typing them in the, in the chat and we'll, we'll collect them and try to answer them uh, in about 10 minutes. Um, but should, should we move on to the next one, Lee? Yeah, sure, Dom. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, uh, an installation shot, am I right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was from your, the, the show that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, in in Japan just before Corona struck, was it? Yeah. So yeah, this was a show. It's an exhibition called Lines. You can see it in the window there, yeah. uh, in Kyoto, uh, and that's the drawing that in the last slide you can see there. So this is yeah an installation shot of the exhibition. Uh, it was a really good show. Uh, the other two artists were Japanese, um, but also <laughs> believe it or not very meticulous in their craft making. <laughs> uh, it's a really nice thing to be involved in. And I went out for the uh, private view, which was nice. Made a little bit of a holiday of it. Yeah. Yeah. Other side of the world, you know, might as well. Uh, 
but well you're fascinated by japanese culture aren't you as well, yeah. as well and yeah. and and it, it's no surprise to me at all that, that uh, japanese that japanese your, your work would be so loved by japanese audiences mm. with, with such a love of draftsmanship as, as well i think yeah yeah and crafts i mean yeah. you know there's passion for craft in japan so i know it's a bit more traditional but um yeah there really is a kind of cons all consuming yeah kind of love of craft um, I was going to mention an exhibition I saw a few years ago as well, which uh, ironically, I was like thinking about this chat and I was like, oh yeah, it's all embedded. Like, you know, as I said, it, it feeds through, doesn't it? I went to this amazing show, the Welcome Exhibition. Oh yeah. 2013. Ah. Uh. Uh, and it's like, well, if I was to put it in an umbrella term, outsider art. And it was art made by Japanese artists. Well, if you want to call them artists, like um, uh, makers uh, who have mental health issues, but like make, they're not trained artists. Yeah. And, uh, but the craft is kind of, you know, repetitive. And obviously I had a kind of connection there. So it's like, yes, so, I mean, that's something I haven't mentioned, Dom, you know, like the repetitive nature of making these marks it is, <laughs> you can say like it's probably therapeutic or meditative, you know, you could really get involved. Yeah. And like with the last drawing in particular, yeah. um, it takes a good hour and a half to get into the concentration. Yeah. So once you're in the zone, then you, then I feel like I'm, so it's the hardest part is getting in, you know, and, and then it's kind of you, time does this weird thing, a bit like lockdown maybe. Yeah. Where like it either speeds right up or it slows right down. Yeah. Um, and I could listen to anything on my headphones and I've forgotten what I've listened to because yeah. <laughs> they're just totally immersed. So, but yeah, I mean, that exhibition was uh, kind of related to, I was doing at the time and I was doing the drawings when that exhibition was on so I was like ah so w w with this particular installation it looks mm. like I've done something in that's not is that a black frame yeah so the previous drawings I had in the Domabar exhibition I mentioned they were all in like you know really pristine white frames yeah and I the woman that runs this space is a collector So she bought the works, uh, but I didn't know what frame she was going to use so, because like she was going to put them in this exhibition. She bought the works and she was going to put them in the exhibition and she was going to frame them how she liked. So it's like, oh, you know, I was expecting white frames and she gave it a black frame and a black mount board. And I was like, bold. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's nice. So I, I quite liked it. I was like, I turned up when they were installing the exhibition the day before the private view and I was like, Oh, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and then you'll see in the next slide, Dom, and I'm going to apologise in advance for this, that I'm in the picture. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a narcissist. It's just the only <laughs> picture I've got of, of the effect that they had on the drawing. Um, so if you cover me up, um, <laughs> you'll see that at night time, uh, as you saw, it was in the window. So it was in the wall behind the window. Yeah, and once the sun had gone down, obviously you wouldn't be able to see it. But they spotlit it. But what they'd done is they'd cropped a little aperture in the halogen bulb, so it perfectly framed the drawing. So it almost looked like a TV projection, which I quite yeah. liked. So, wow. Uh, and and would you um, consider uh, sort of curating your work in that manner in the future? Or? Oh, I don't know. You know what? I've never thought about it. <laughs> I just thought it's quite nice, uh, but yeah, it's possible. But then, I mean, I liked it as a kind of one-off idea. Yeah. I, you know, I get the question: Oh, is it a drawing? Quite often. Um, but I might have the added question: I'm just like, is that a projection? Uh, yeah. So it's possible that I might confuse people too much if I have that added added level to it yeah. but it's quite nice as a well yeah I thought so oh, that's really nice
different. Okay. And this, um, this, this is going back a bit, isn't it? But just to, uh, for another example of how your work actually looks in a space. Yeah. What was, what, what was this? Uh, so this is the same exhibition. So uh, all three artists are in this, well, all three artists works are in this picture. Uh, so mine is on the far left. Uh, again, another black frame and a black mount board. Um, and the artist in the middle, uh, Rio, uh, he does these large uh, dry point drawings of water. Mm -hmm. uh, they're incredible. Um, and the artist on the right uses Japanese lacquer to create wall sculptures. They're pretty amazing as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of detail and craft involved in their work. But sorry, Don, what was your question again? No, that was, I mean, you've, you've answered the question. That, that was, um, I just wanted to get an idea of whether this was the same exhibition or whether yeah. this was a different exhibition. So how many pieces of work did you have in this show? Uh, I had three. So the, the first slides, the knickers, um, the one in the window, which is the ball of socks, and this one, which, uh, yeah, was also a pair of discarded socks that mm -hmm. didn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't decide on the hanging, but it was quite a nicely curated show. Yeah. Okay, well, I think the next slide brings us right up to date. Is that right? Yeah, I finished this uh, couple, of, no, last week, I think. Uh, so I don't know if we meant, if anyone kind of saw right at the beginning, uh, I was kind of talking about the artist support pledge or plugging it, basically. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, Matthew Burrows. Um, uh, yeah, so basically since the beginning of the pandemic, um, artists and creative people, if you had art-based jobs, working in galleries as gallery technician or an invigilator or a framer, obviously, like so many other jobs, everything was shut down. Um, and there was this really nice little uh, Instagram thing that Matthew Burroughs put across where artists could sell their works for anything up to 200 pounds each. So this isn't in that. Um, but this stems from that. So I was doing a lot of studies, uh, looks like MDF, but it's craft paper, um, mm -hmm. of tissues. So used tissues kind of stems from the used clothes or discarded clothes idea. And I've been doing drawings and paintings, oil and acrylic. So I have basically spent the last year kind of trying different mediums out. Um, and yeah, getting myself set up for a new body of work, really. So what scale is this on, Lee? That, how, how big is the piece of craft paper? That I it think was? that's probably, uh, <clears throat> oh, my screen will be different size to everyone else's, won't it? Um, that is, so the paper itself, so that is a cropped version of the paper, uh, is A5. Yeah. The drawing itself is probably, 10 centimeters by seven, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So smaller than what I've got on my screen. But. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, when we were talking about this before, you were telling me about um, a show that you'd been to see of Artemisia Pintoleski. Yes, yeah. So how did that feed into some of these interests? Uh, we just, Fed through, Dom. I'm going to keep on using that phrase. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just, uh, her, her handling of fabric is incredible. Um, yeah, so that, that must have fed through into these studies. Yeah. I've always been a sucker for uh, fabric in, in paintings anyway, especially, you know, Baroque and um, Renaissance work. But yeah, Gentilesi has definitely got Artemisia. She's, um, She's got it down pat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this is, this is acrylic. Um, as I mentioned, did I mention it's a study? 
Uh, so in my head, I'm thinking, is it a finished piece of work? Or study a finished piece of work? And um, one of my other favorite artists is Albert Dürer. Mm -hmm. And he kind of was of the belief that, I mean, obviously a lot of his work is like very finished anyway, but he values studies as much as he did finished pieces of work. He said like, that is also a piece of work. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, uh, study, in my head only takes a few days so in contrast to my usual remit of you know one or two pieces a year uh this took me three days i think if i was to talk about eight hour days probably three days work so i think another thing i got from the support pledge was like you know it's quite it was quite a good way of me challenging how you know quickly I can make a piece of work or what my limits were and um, yeah this could possibly be a way of me you know stepping outside of my usual comfort zone because I'm also thinking you know could make this larger you know I could maybe you know scale up my work so it's a possibility yeah. as well so and yeah acrylic as you know is like it's quite quick drying uh, it's got a translucent quality and this is monochrome as you can see, but it's only two colours, so it's ivory black and titanium white, so it really pairs things down, because I struggle nowadays with mixing colours, <laughs> I don't know whether that just makes me lazy or I'm just thinking in a different way, maybe both. <laughs> if, you, if you were to scale up, I mean, how would you sort of, would you still want the works to carry the same kind of intensity? Or? Oh, you asked me this the other day and I couldn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't know unless I try. Yeah. yeah. That's the answer I'm going to give you. Because I don't know how I'd respond. I mean, I'd probably be loving the fluid nature of the paint marks. If it was larger, I'd be like, oh, I remember what this was like a long time ago. Um, or I might just be, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have to try it out, Tom. The only problem is I cannot, for love nor money, find good quality craft paper on a large scale. Right. Even a really good paper merchant's uh, in Brixton, which I've forgotten the name of. Purcell. Yeah, they don't do craft paper. And I was like, what? So this is from a this is from a really cheap craft paper sketchbook from Paper Chase. And it's wow. the best craft paper I've found. So, <laughs> so I'm going to email Paper Chase and ask them where do you get your paper from? Do, you yeah. do, do they do big rolls and stuff? Because that'd be great. I'd like to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so Jane Jones on the phones. Have yeah. you got any questions for yeah, us? Yeah, there's quite a few questions. Quite a few questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, Bruce is asking the same question I wanted to ask you actually. Um, with the drawings, do you start um, by roughing out the overall outline of the object, or do you start at one point and then go for the details straight away and then build up the drawing? Yeah. You know? uh, the second point. So I, I kind of do a Stanley Spencer. So I'll start in one corner and then I'll work my way across. Huh. But I did do one, because I was starting to worry about time running out, uh, where I sectioned it out. So I was like, right, if I do this section a day and that section a day, I won't be so stressed. So there was one where I kind of did draw out the kind of basic, yeah, so. Yeah. Wow, mind blowing. Great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, Mary asks, um, do you use a magnifying glass at any point of your drawing process? No. No, wow. <laughs> no, and that's a, no, I, I do get that question quite a lot, and that's fine. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the thing is, it's not, it's not an endurance test. It's just, as soon as I start blowing things up, I might as well use a microscope, because it's like, at what point do you end? Mm. So the fact that I'm just doing it by eye is enough because mm. if I start using a magnifying glass it's like oh it's opened up a whole new yeah. can of worms yeah 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 Mary also asks um has drawing the textiles in such detail prompted you to learn knitting or weaving actually making the objects no it hasn't really I did knit a little bit when I was younger 
I knitted my teddy bear, a pair of trousers, a scarf. <laughs> oh, and some mittens, yeah. My nan taught me, but I've probably forgotten now. I don't know, is it like riding a bike? Will you, will you remember if you tried it? Um, I don't know. If we've got any knitters in the audience, please, please <laughs> let us know. It, but, but no, I, I wouldn't because um, I don't have the time yeah. <laughs> at the moment. But. Yeah. Uh, Paul says, thanks for sharing the challenges in your work. And he asks, do you consciously or unconsciously make rules for your drawing before you start? Make rules? Mm, yeah. Uh, well, I think me and Don touched on with the photos, um, decisions are kind of being made for me because I'll either crop it uh, or I've taken the photograph or I crop it and it's to scale. So it's kind of like those decisions kind of keep me in check and I, I don't have to complicate my head with um, all the other decision making. Uh, when it comes to the actual objects, again, I try to keep it to scale because that kind of brings decision making down. But rules, I mean, that's quite a, quite a broad question. Uh, rules. Um, I suppose not using any kind of magnification is a rule in a sense, like you're my, using the limit of your actual eyesight. As a mm, yeah, yeah, that's, so that's definitely one. Um, yeah, I, d I don't know. Uh, I think that's the only answer I can give, really. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a limiting factor as in like, you know, it's got to be done with this specific pencil or it just kind of those material decisions are kind of, I feel like I usually make those rules in response to what the subject matter is telling me. Yeah. So for example, this one, the tissue is really white. So you know you would have like add, uh, it made sense for that to be monochrome for example so i thought well a rule i have for this one is i'll just use two colors mm. um so i won't try and complicate things by you know mixing up brown and brown burnt amber or a yellow or anything like that mm. um yeah i don't know if that's answered paul's question Oh. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's great. Um, right. You know, um, Favid asks, how do you feel about people looking at photographs of your work rather than seeing the actual works themselves? Imagine that comes from a desire for, to see the work, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame, but there's not really much you can do at the moment. Um, yeah, I'd love, I, I would prefer people to see the work in the flesh because uh, it does add an extra level especially when you see that it's been made rather than an image being stuck onto a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. Because the craft is important. And also, I mean, I do get a question. I don't know if one of the questions coming is going to be this one. Do I get annoyed by people saying it looks like a photograph? <laughs> um, I'm kind of used to that question. And in a way, I kind of find it a little bit flattering. Yeah. Um, but... I want it to be incredibly detailed, A, because of all the reasons I've mentioned already, and B, because if someone sees it in the flesh, they have to get close to it uh, to kind of work out what, what's going on. And then it kind of reveals itself, which kind of adds an extra level to the work, so. Yeah. Uh, have we got time for a couple more? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, Julia asks, um, with, uh, with your drawing having such sculptural qualities, do you ever feel tempted to move into 3D with equal amount of detail on the object surface? Uh, I think like when I was talking about the carrier bag piece, I think that's probably as far as I can go. Uh, I don't think I'm a sculptor. I probably do a really bad job. Um, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I did, it's been a long time since I've tried doing sculpture. I mean, the only other medium I thought might fit quite nicely with what I do is animation. Mm. Uh, so that's something that someone mentioned to me a while back. But I mean, sculpture, uh, I think some of my previous work is cut sculptural so, to a certain extent, but I think it will usually be an image-based work that I do. I don't think I can do sculpture, yeah. 
yeah. I kind of feel like they 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 very much are sculpture in in mm. many ways. You know, I've, I've always said that about the work. It feels to me like you kind of sculpt with the pencil. Um, mm. Or maybe like what Julia was asking that, you know, like they are in essence, like they are objects floating in space. So they kind of look like maybe I'm screaming out, oh, I want to be a sculptor, but I'm, I'm not, I'm really not. <laughs> That's as far as probably it's going to go. Um, yeah, because they are objects and I want to describe them as such. Mm. But I don't want to create objects. I want to yeah. describe objects and understand them. Yeah. Yeah, just two really quick ones. Um, yeah, Mary asked whether G.F. Smith do craft type paper. I think she maybe just... G.F. Smith, yeah. maybe. Oh, I've never heard of them. Thank you, Mary. They're, ba they're based in Hull. G.F. Smith. G.F. Smith, yeah. Smith yeah. yeah. Okay. And they do, they do work with artists quite a lot as well, yeah. Thanks, okay. Mary. And right. you uh, Thanks. asked whether you have a favourite kind of brand of pencil. Yes, I do. Do you want to know what it is? <laughs> I don't know what it is, <laughs> Okay, well, I've got two, and it depends what grade it is. <sighs> Getting quite geeky here. <clears throat> so, for really hard graphite, so like the H's, uh, Lyra. Lyra. Yeah. Lyra. A bit of product placement here, folks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm advertising. So Lyra, that's a five page. And then there's certain Faber Castell are really good as well, um, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. But I think Faber Castell are quite good for like Bs, so like two B in your darker tones, the softer, the softer graphite. Um, yeah, check them out. Wow. If you haven't already. Okay, lovely. Well, look, thanks very much, Lee. That's that's all questions answered, um, and I think we've we've kind of run out of time now. Uh, okay. But um, I'd just like to to thank you, Lee. Uh, oh, thank you, Doc. All, all of us. <laughs> uh, it's been a really interesting talk, and you know, you, you, you uh, having known your work for quite a long time, it's just it's always fascinating to hear you talk about these intense pieces of work and um so i'm really glad you've been able to join us tonight no it's been a privilege thanks tom thank you so um just for everyone for the benefit of everyone else we'll we'll have another feral fry up number nine uh, next month um we'll we'll be in contact to let you all know who, who that's going to be and a bit more about the artist um if you're not already subscribed to our emails, then just keep keep having a look on the Feral Art School website, uh, and you should get the the, the Zoom link um, closer closer to the date. Um, I don't think there's any more housekeeping I need to do, Jane. Is what there? are you going to say about the exhibition? It's just one more little plug: the Feral Art School uh, tutors exhibition is still um, up for you to see if your daily exercise regime takes you anywhere near Humber Street and the spotlights go on at four o'clock so don't worry if it's getting dark you'll still be able to see the show and that'll be up um, for, for a bit longer we don't know exactly how long um, but yeah that's that, that that's it for, for this feral fry up number eight thank you very much Lee I'm going to give you a virtual round of applause I'll pass on everybody's, there's some really lovely there's, messages, there's some, I'll pass them on. There's yeah. some lovely messages from the audience, Lee, that we're going to pass on to. Oh, you. thank you. Um, and thanks uh, for everyone uh, to, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. And Lee, <laughs> what? just just in case anyone wants to have a, a further look at uh, or hook up with you on in Instagram or your, mm. your website, what, what can you just tell us what those are? Yeah, so it's www www.leeedwardsart.co.uk uh, is my website and I've also got an Instagram account uh, at Lee Edwards Art. Brilliant. Okay well thanks very much Lee and thanks everyone. I'm gonna close the meeting now so I hope to see you all at the next Feral Fry Up. Lee if you want to stay on we'll, we'll have a quick chat okay. um, but very nice to see you all and thanks for joining us so Goodbye. Thanks, guys.